I'm very proud of this project. It's so important to me, and I hope others, that I've decided for the very first time to script a video. No ums and ahs, sidetracking and irrelevancies. Just the facts that hopefully might help you to utilise the amazing Expressive ESP32 to its greatest potential. I'll just get this out of the way so it's not uh, distracting us as I go through. And we might get a little bit close to these two and see where we've come from and where hopefully we're going to. Well, this project goes back a little ways now. I wanted to try a few things at once. One thing I wanted to do was to use one of these chips and make my own module. And, uh, and so that's just a soldering exercise, really. And I was able to break out all the pins, so that worked pretty well. The second thing is that this particular prototype board includes a space for a relay. And I wanted to be able to control bigger currents, bigger loads. So even though this is a 3.3 volt device, fire a MOSFET, this is a BS170, it can switch on the relay and we can control quite a lot of current, which I did, and that was fine. I also, a little side project here was uh, a regulator. So this is 5 volts coming in, and then we've got a regulator down to 3.3, and so that controls the um, or provides the power for the ESP32. And a bit, old, a bit of a, a big old honking uh, capacitor here, uh, because when the ESP32 does contact a device, it does draw a little bit of current, so that's actually quite handy. Probably the biggest challenge for this, or maybe what prompted the project, was to find some code and code this thing over the air, or OTA. So there's a lot of standard code out there, and it worked pretty well. Uh, so I'll link up the original uh, YouTube video, and all the code is on the blog associated with that video. But there was a couple of niggling doubts about it. The first thing is that you need to hard code your Wi-Fi credentials into the chip. So, yeah, that could be a security issue, I guess. And you can get around that by using a Wi-Fi manager, which I'll, uh, I'll link up here as well. <clears throat> and that's fine to use a Wi-Fi manager, except, again, after entering in your details, they are in here. I think they are stored in EEPROM, usually. So more convenient, but still doesn't really get around the security issue, I suppose. Also, what if there's no Wi-Fi? Um, what if there's no internet, but you still need to change the code uh, in here or access the device somehow? Now, you can operate in SDA and, OT, uh, and AP uh, mode, but um, most of the projects out there that involve OTA use Wi-Fi, use it in SDA mode. I wanted to um, think about the idea of maybe doing uh, over-the-air programming on an AP. Another project, a more recent one, I call the BIN project, I was based on an, uh, a Shao ESP32 S3, and it served a couple of functions. It monitored the internet, reported on the strength of Wi-Fi, told me whether I was still connected or not to the router, whether the router was connected to the internet, but also uh, it kept track of the day of the week and told me whether I should be putting out the recycling bin or the normal rubbish bin or both. Uh, so pretty useful. And one of the interesting uh, components of that project was that I was able to program it so it was, it, it was an AP, so I could actually, an access point, I could log in there and I could change you know, which week uh, had which bin just in case there was a power failure or whatever. So the holy grail for me now is to combine these two Projects. This is actually an ESP32C3, which we'll use for um, demonstration purposes. But I like to combine the two. Can we do over the air programming, but have the ESP32 act as its own AP? Bit of a holy grail, that one. If we can combine that, then uh, that would be pretty good. That means that you could have your ESP project deep buried somewhere, log in, actually upload and change the code on the fly. Very, very cool. Let's go upstairs, connect this thing up and see what we can do. Here we are on the GitHub, which is linked on the blog. And I've just got some information here that I've just thrown together about what the project is about. And uh, this is where you would get your code from if you wanted to try it. So you just go to code and download zip. And then we'll open up that zip file and have a look and see what's in there. 
Once we've unzipped it, you can see that there's a folder and inside that there are the three files that comprise the main project. So opening those, you can see them here and they have their tabs. We'll just start with this one. This is where all the over the air code is found. There's a couple of things that you can change in here, what you call your access point and what your password is to get in. And there's a couple of other things as well. For instance, down a bit further, um, you can set your own IP address. And then once you do log into that IP address, you can also set your uh, admin password, which I think I've got somewhere here is just admin and admin. If I can find it, must have gone past it. Um, I think I've actually got, uh, here we go. Yes, I've got a little thing that says change credentials here. That's what I was looking for. And the credentials at the moment are just admin and admin. So that is once you get into the page. All right, so we just compile it. Now, the first time that you compile this, you'll just want to compile it and upload via the cable. So I do have a cable connected up. Uh, so I should just be able to uh, press on that. It's compiling for the ESP32C3 and uploading via the USB at this stage. And then we'll just use the ESB as power and we'll try and upload it over the air. So everything's looking good. And now, oh, I didn't actually press the upload button. Let's do that. I just did the compiling. Uh, it'll go through the whole thing again. And here we go. So, yeah, so this one is just going to blink. Uh, and if we have a look at the other two files, uh, this one, my main.h, this is just mimicking uh, a normal uh, Arduino sketch. So it's got your variables, it's got setup, which is called my setup and loop which is called my loop so you just put your actual code in there and then the tjquery.h is the um, is a very large file and that actually uh, controls the page which does the uploading so that's a server index uh, file so as long as they're all in the same directory uh, you don't really need to touch this one once you have changed any of the uh, you know OTA stuff that you want to. This is your actually your main files. This is one that will uh, that will mess with. Um, you can see that that's some pretty obnoxious flashing happening. And uh, what we probably want to do is to change in the variables the time. So I've got a hundred milliseconds for one of the LEDs, and this is on the um, the RGB that's on the board itself. And the other one is for the other one. So if we just make this a bit bigger, so we make that. Uh, yeah, so a second and two and a half seconds. When we compile it this time, we won't upload it via the cable. We'll go and find it in the uh, temporary directory and uh, and then we will upload it uh, over the air. So on a Linux uh, operating system, this could vary depending on what you've got, but you'll be able to find it pretty easily. Uh, mine's in the temporary directory. There is all the files associated with that particular build. And this is the one that we want here. So that's the one that we're going to pluck out and use to change the speed on that um, on that ESP32 C3. So let's go and see if we can log in to the actual um, ESP itself operating in AP mode. So here we are. We are logged into the ESP32 and we have an option to put in an admin password here. So I've just made it admin and admin as a default. Once we get to this area here, we simply choose our file. This is the slow blink one we just made. And we this is the binary file, just updates. You can see that doing that on the ESP32C3. And it's a lot faster than the cable version. And there it is, slow blinking. I think I've got a fade in here as well. If I pick a fade, and we'll do another over the air. There you go, it's stopped on the device. Uploads pretty quick. And it should go into a fading. Yeah, look at that, beautiful. So I'm gonna call out the circuit working for this week. All the code is on the blog and also on the GitHub. Uh, all the links are there. Give it a go, it's a pretty easy way to find and update your ESP32 project. Uh, I think it's gonna be pretty useful. Uh, comments and suggestions below. See you next time.